All right, hello and welcome. This lecture is going to be about explaining what is GridDB, where it came from, um, and potential reasons why you may want to explore and use and learn about GridDB. Okay, so first and foremost, GridDB is a database. Um, you might already be familiar with some kind of databases, most likely relational databases. So these are the, the very typical things you think about when you think of databases like MySQL or Oracle or maybe Postgres, QL. Um, so those are, like I said, those are relational databases. Um, these days, there are newer kinds of databases called NoSQL databases. Um, some examples you probably already know as well are MongoDB and to a lesser extent, um, Cassandra. So there are hundreds of databases out there actually. So uh, you might be wondering why, why does there need to be so many databases? Um, the real reason is because there's actually a ton of variety within the data that we need to store. <clears throat> so for example, we need to store logs, records, sometimes audio, sometimes video. And in GridDB's case, uh, we need to sometimes care about storing sensor data. Um, and when you have a very specific workload like IoT sensor data, um, it's best to have a database that is completely optimized and ready-made for that specific workload. Um, because if you scale out to big business, big, big data type workloads, um, just using a relational database will not cut it anymore because the data will be overwhelming and the, the database will not be able to handle so many records of data in, in one big table. Okay, so now where did GridDB come from? Uh, GridDB was made in Japan. Um, it's, so when you think of Japan, you probably first think of its cultural um, productions like sumo wrestlers or anime or something like that. Um, but you probably also know that Japan is really known for its craftsmanship. Um, so Japan produces many high quality products such as vehicles, you know, robots and that kind of stuff. Um, so in the early 2010s, as Japan was moving towards, um, you know, the next industrial revolution. So industrial revolution is, you know, industry 3.0. Uh, so now we're moving on to the, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, many Japanese manufacturers started to think about how to improve the conventional process of the Internet of Things. Um, so through different kind of sensors, more and more data was being collected. And as I stated before, when you have different kind of workloads, it's better to have a very specific database which can handle that. Um, so because Toshiba Digital Solutions is a sy system integrator, um, they saw this as an opportunity to create what is now called GridDB. All right, so as stated, GridDB is an IoT database. Um, so from the get-go, many of Toshiba's customers um, came from the manufacturing and social infrastructure sectors where IoT devices have become more and more prevalent as the years have gone on. Um, so this really large massive amount of data that is coming from these IoT devices must be stored in a database um, which could put a lot of stress on a conventional database such as a relational database. Um, so GridDB exists and is a NoSQL database and it offers a NoSQL interface um, to accommodate the ingestion of very large amounts of sensor data, IoT data. Um, so that's the NoSQL portion of it. But um, there's also a portion of life where you need to analyze all of the data coming in because if you have data just sitting in a database not doing anything, it's kind of useless. Um, you also need to analyze and visualize this data um, to provide some kind of business insight or business um, yeah, business insights. Um, so because many traditional tools in the BI and BA space um, are for SQL, GridDB also provides a SQL interface to um, provide a way to still allow business analytics and business visualization through GridDB. Um, yeah, so basically what I mean to say is 
GridDB allows NoSQL interface to ingest our data and also provides a SQL interface. So you can still run SQL query commands and you can still use JDBC and SQL and stuff like that for your traditional BI tools like Power BI, for example. All right, and here now we see what um, is the GridDB data model. So the GridDB data model is what is called a key container data model. Um, you can see it on the rightmost here in this slide. Um, basically, you have a key, um, which could be, um, you know, how, how you would describe the, the data in there. And then the data in here, in this case, is a container, um, which actually is pretty much the same as a relational database table. Um, so if you're already familiar with a SQL database table, you probably could do well to learn GridDB fairly easily. Um, so once you get inside to the container level, it's, it's, it's basically a relational database. So it has a fixed schema um, and provides all the benefits of having a fixed schema, like atomicity and all that stuff, which we'll get into later. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really similar to a SQL database, once again, to the container level. Uh, but when you, use, when you zoom out, you'll, there'll be a bunch of keys and containers attached. Um, other NoSQL databases also have um, different data model compared to just a normal SQL database. So MongoDB has a, famously has a key document store. Um, so MongoDB is really uh, flexible and really easy to make, spin up new apps because um, you have a key, then you have the document is unstructured data. So you can easily make a new key and a new data store on the fly because there's no structure. Um, but that has its own downsides, which we will probably talk about later in this course. All right, and the last point I wanna talk about here is um, how GridDB stores its IoT data. Um, so you can see here, these are, this is a zoom in to the key container data model. Um, so once you get a key, then you have a container, like I said, uh, but there are two types of container possible choices here. So you can do a collection container, um, which is just like a normal SQL database table. Um, so the key can be anything, or the row key can be anything. So here in the example, it's just the ID name, a string. So equip, equipment 001, equipment 002, etc. Uh, but the interesting one is the time series container. Um, so this one has a timestamp as a row key, and with it, it comes with special time series functionality in this container. So it has special time series um, features and partitioning and, and lots of other cool features. Um, so this kind of stuff we'll go over more in depth later as the course goes on, as it's very important to GridDB and what makes it a good IoT database.